All right, so on Sunday on the equinox, the day of the equinox, the first day of spring, Jason and I started up Little Cottonwood Canyon and we wanted to uh, make, set an intention for healing of the uh, ARPANET and the Human Genome Project at the Alta Ski Resort Lodge. And we had this little sedan rental car and uh, we started up the canyon. It looked like it had been sort of raining, but it, the rain, the snow got thicker and thicker and thicker. <laughs> And we thought we were going, you know, it was going fine, but then it got really bad. And we were concerned about pulling over and where to pull over. So we really could only keep going forward. And um, uh, it was pretty stressful. Jason was really stressed. and But, you know, ultimately we made it to the top. We made it to the top. And instead of this very graceful um, ceremonial offering that I had with my Liberty Bell and my flowers, I essentially jumped out, went, tucked my head under this uh, towaway zone area and tucked it all out. And Jason recorded it. So this is what it looks like. Yeah, and I wouldn't have been so concerned if I had a better vehicle, but the car we had, the rental was not very good in the snow. We are here on uh, Little Cottonwood Canyon uh, outside of uh, Salt Lake City, and uh, uh, we went to the... Uh, to the top of the mountain to Alta Ski Resort. It, it's snowy today and we have a, a car that is not in super great shape. So we, we went up to the mountain and we provide, we laid an offering down. It is the equinox today, so the first day of spring. And I brought uh, flowers and some artifacts that people had given to me and also the Liberty Bell because part of what we're dealing with now with the metaverse is this issue of domination and empire and, and wrapped in a mythology of liberty. And so I have this little model Liberty Bell that I took up and left there because it has a crack. And so within the, the, the uh, context of Stephen Newcomb's thought is that the dom of domination is the dome and the Liberty Bell is like the dome of domination that we have freedom, but only within the constraints of the dome. And so soon this new dome is gonna be the metaverse. And we have to figure out, you know, what's if we want to live under the dome or not. And I feel like uh, we owe it to the natural world to break out of that dome and to, and to take our place to be the, the stewards of nature and the protectors of nature and human beings in this era of nanoelectronics. So I left my uh, Liberty Bell up there and some, some offerings and a spiral away from the dome of cedar, uh, cedar needles and also some flowers that I had brought. Uh, to, to Channel Spring, and, and it was a spiral away from the Liberty Bell, and it sort of spread out a, across the snow, and then it was all dropping in the snow. But that was the offering to say that, that we acknowledge, that we understand that there's a certain amount of freedom given to us, but in this time of um, increased constraint of the digital enclosures that we need to break out of that and we need to reconnect with nature. And we chose this location because the Alta Ski Resort was actually the site of two important gatherings at least. The first of which was in um, 1968 at Rustler Lodge. And that was the gathering where they, uh, computer scientists and government officials met to uh, design the internet. At that point, it was called the ARPANET. And they, DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, had been doing work into packet switching, how to convey information across a distance from one computer to another. And, um, the following year, they set up the first uh, two nodes. It was between UCLA and uh, SRI, Stanford Research uh, Institute. And it was supposed to be, the first message was supposed to be log in, L-O-G-I-N, but it bro broke down after L-O, so it was just called Lo. <laughs> and I think Werner Herzog has a movie called Lo and Behold about the internet. So eventually they added the next two uh, nodes, and um, that included UC Santa Barbara and uh, the University of Utah. So the University of Utah was the fourth node and they were very active because they had been taking DARPA contracts uh, to work on this packet sharing work. Um, the gentleman who oversaw that, his name was David Evans and he was a member of the Church of uh, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, he was a computer scientist working on time sharing formerly at UC Berkeley and he was working on something called Project Genie. Then he came back to the University of Utah along with Ivan Sutherland. Sutherland had also been at Berkeley uh, and Harvard and he was working in um, a computer graphics. He was well known for computer graphics and that's what the University of Utah is really important, known for. And that's important because the metaverse is really about file sharing and documentation and computer graphics. 
So they um, helped advance the ARPANET and this meeting happened up there. So just a couple other things. Ivan Sutherland later replaced uh, JR, JCR Licklider at DARPA. Um, and he, so he and David Evans founded this company that was working on graphic design. He had a number of esteemed students working with him, one of which was uh, Edwin Catmull. And Edwin Catmull was interested in developing uh, animation, digital animation. And he went on to actually found Pixar and became president of Disney. And so I think when we understand life and animation and the idea of digitally designing life with pixels or molecules, it sort of segues into our next um, event that happened at ARPA, which was the Human Genome Project. In December of 1984, uh, the, a number of scientists, uh, eight, 19, gathered at Alta Ski Resort to um, envision how, essentially they were gathering under the auspices of dealing with um, the research into the long-term genetic mutations from the bombs dropped on uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And um, that's actually very relevant even to the West because there were a lot of test, testing in Utah. Utah is a uranium mining center. And there was a lot of test fallout even on domestic populations here in Utah that was causing cancer. And from that they decided to, the best course of action, even though it seemed outlandish at the time, was to sequence the human genome. And then from that sequencing is what's leading us into this world of synthetic biology and biohacking and hybrid life forms. Um, where man, and this goes back to our transhumanist conference yesterday, that, we, that there's this idea that we use these technologies to become creators of new worlds and to become like God, essentially, and to create new worlds in the metaverse, to create new forms of life, um, and putting one's, having the hubris to put oneself up in that space. Um, so that's why it was important that we came up to, to um, Alta today, is both the Human uh, Genome Project and the creation of the ARPANET. And um, also just a couple of individuals, George Church attended the Human Genome Gathering, was one of the 19 scientists. And of course he is key at Harvard and with the WIS Institute on um, uh, Biodesigned engineering and CRISPR and 23andMe. And uh, also, someone named Richard Myers was a young graduate student, and now he is working at Hudson Alpha in Hudsville on this. Um, so, you know, I think that's sort of, it's going to be the segue. We're going to go down to the University of Utah Research Park. That was founded in 1968, so the year following the ARPANET meeting. And then from that, that's been very intense development in um, computing and bioengineering and a lot of things having to do with mental health and psychiatry. And so I think now we've also moved into the area of neural prosthetics and uh, tele-operated robotics and where your advanced neural prosthetic is going to be a robot walking around like that movie surrogates which is kind of crazy but if you back it all the way up it goes at least back to the design of the arpanet here um, on little cottonwood canyon and just to, to reinforce um, uh, this this ski resort is one of the oldest and it's on the the land of the goshoot tribe this little cottonwood canyon so there were ways of being on this land before the militarized internet and before uh, bioengineering and so we're here today it's snowing it this also connects to powder there's a test bed in this area of the University of Utah that's connected to Rice University that is a high level test bed for new t forms of um, telecommunications like MIMO massively interconnected operations and so they're bringing they've created with rice which is a center for the nanotechnology space and graphene and other things to create these new test beds of frequency wave radiation um, so there's a lot going on that interconnects between transhumanism the internet uh, bioengineering and then this research lab that we're going to go down to today so and it all is embedded within the powder <laughs> and that we want to really connect to to nature right to to the natural world. Um, and it's about frequency. It's about frequency. It's about water. We're water beings. We're electrical water beings. And we want to claim our birthright as natural beings, not synthetic beings. <laughs>